Hello, my friends, and welcome to another edition of Midweek Encouragement. Coming to you today from uh, Miss Marie's kitchen, and uh, just a word from Psalm chapter 84. Hope you take your Bibles and follow along with me. Uh, precious, precious Psalm, and we're going to read the first five verses together as uh, as we gaze into a psalm to calm us today. Psalm chapter 84, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord our God, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, in the, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and a swallow has found a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord God Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever, always praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you and whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. All right? precious verses um, <clears throat> this uh, this psalm was was credited to one of the sons of Korah one of the Levitical families that uh, was responsible for the music for the tabernacle music for the temple worship and this the psalm was written during the Babylonian captivity during the 70 years where they uh, where they they were in exile from Jerusalem in Babylon uh, where uh, Jeremiah was living with them uh, Daniel Shadrach Meshach and Abednego were serving in the Babylonian court all right so puts all of this into uh, into context for us puts us in, gives us some identification with timing and meaning all right um, and let's, uh, verse number one says, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. And this is, this is, um, this can be translated either lovely or it could be translated lovable. Either way, it's a, it's a, it's a term of endearment, a, to a, a token of endearment of this singer, this worshiper of God, endearing himself to God and his temple, wishing, wishing, wishing that he could be back in Jerusalem to worship God in his temple. Verse number two says, my soul yearns, it longs, it, it aches for, uh, it, it, it even faints, he says, for the courts of the Lord. The writer's describing uh, his desire to be back in God's house, back in God's temple, back in God's house of worship. Uh, and he's praying for a restoration for uh, a, a restoration of those privileges of being back in God's temple. Now we can identify just a little bit because we were out for about four months that we could not meet in our church building and yet we have to put also in in proper comparison these folks were in Babylon for 70 years so we have a, a tiny teeny <laughs> teensy little taste of what they were feeling but so tiny compared to 70 years away from God's house um, it, it, it shows his, his great desire to walk again in the courts of God's temple, to join God's people in their worship in that holy place. Uh, he says, my, my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. He says, uh, the King James actually says, my heart and my flesh are consumed with the living God that he, he was he was so anxious 
to meet again with God in God's house that he could almost taste it. How long had it been when he wrote this song? We don't know. That, that, that's not given to us. But we know he loved God supremely and wanted desperately to be back in God's house. He said, my, my heart and my flesh uh, cry out. Uh, an, an alternate translation there would be sings for joy. Well, those, those can be comparable. Sometimes our joy causes us to sing. Sometimes we sing when we're lonely, when we're hurting, because singing restores joy to our heart. And so either way uh, that this is translated is, uh, uh, would, would be workable, would be profitable to us. My heart, my flesh, cry out for joy to the living God. My body, my soul, my entire being is in pain. I love God so much. I miss Him so much. It's painful. We've all been away from those that we love to, to the point that we ached to be with them once again. And this is the type of love that, that this psalmist, the son of Korah, was expressing here in these verses. He said, um, uh, uh, the passion of my heart, the, the passion of my heart causes my tongue to cry out to sing out to God. To, I want to know God. I want to love God. I want to enjoy God's favor and enjoy communion with Him in His house. All right? Verse number three. What a precious picture here. Even the sparrow has found a home. The swallow has found a place for her nest where she can have her young, a place near your altar, O Lord. And so David is, uh, uh, the son of Korah is not David, but one of the sons of Korah is saying that, you know, the, the, the buildings were not all completely closed in like our buildings are today. We're, our buildings are designed to keep the birds and the bugs and the critters out but in those days many more openings because there was no air conditioning and so they had uh, openings for cross breezes and and ventilation in that way our worship of God is our peace in this world in this evil world and so it's a time that we can draw close to God, draw close to His altar, close to His heart. And, and like, the, like the birds would fly into the, into the temple and nest up in the rafters. God wants us to love Him so much that we want to stay in His house, stay in communion with Him, and have a place that we are close to Him day in, day out, so that we can, we can enjoy His presence. Um, when we miss church like we've done during the, uh, the pandemic, when we miss church, we regret that we miss. Sometimes we don't miss because uh, because the, the church building is closed, sometimes we miss church because we're physically unable to come any longer. We can't sit that long. We can't stand that long. We can't, we can't endure the trip to and from God's house. And that's where we meet with God in our home, in our room, day after day after day. That communion is not dependent on location. That communion is dependent on our love for God. And it's our job, it's our responsibility to spend that time day by day learning more about God and loving God more. What the nest is to the bird, our worship of God is to our soul. 
It's our comfort. It's our confidence because we know we're meeting with God. Uh, Charles Spurgeon, famous English, English pastor, said about this. He said, we rejoice not only in our personal religious uh, opportunities, but also in the great blessing of taking our children with us to the sanctuary. The church of God is a house for us and a nest for our little ones. What a privilege it is to be able to have our boys and girls in big church with us Sunday by Sunday. And of course, during the, during the closure time, we've missed them terribly. During the, even the, the, these early reopening weeks, uh, our, our children are not uh, are not able to come with us. Some parents are just not ready for their kids to be out in a crowd, in public, even in church, and that's okay. God understands that. Nobody's judging. We miss you terribly. But what God's house is to us in comfort, it's a nest for those children to rest in, to grow in, to learn more about God in. Verse number four, he says, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. They are ever crying out to you. All right, is an alternate translation. Matthew Henry said, uh, uh, Those people are truly happy who go out and go on in the practice of their faith, in the strength of the grace of Christ. We're happiest when we go out of the church building after worship and go on living for Jesus day by day. That's our responsibility. That's our privilege. And the world is depending on you and me to show them Jesus with skin on so that they can learn and understand what Jesus is like, who Jesus is. Well, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm not like Jesus. That's the reason we worship day after day. It's the reason we pray. It's the reason we study our Bibles. It's the reason we sing. It's the reason we offer praise to God day after day after day so that we can be Jesus with skin on, so that people can look at our lives and see how Jesus would act, how Jesus would react, how Jesus would respond. Charles Spurgeon, <clears throat> once again, he said, we should be so near to God that our very life must be adoration, adoring God, praising God. Surely our hearts and our tongues never cease from magnifying our Lord. Communion with God is the mother of adoration and praise. Psalm 22 tells us, uh, as we've said so many times, God inhabits the praises of his people. He longs for our worship the same way that we long to worship him. It's a, it's a, it's a mutual relationship that we have. Uh, uh, in, in nature, it's called a symbiotic relationship mistletoe that grows way up high in the trees is dependent on uh, on, on the, uh, uh, the the moisture that the tree sucks up through the through its roots and the the, the uh, mistletoe sucks that moisture out of the tree limb to which it's attached in in return the mistletoe shades the limbs of the tree and helps the tree to remain healthy so it's a, it's a two-way relationship. It's not just all God saving us. It's all of us worshiping God, serving Him because He has saved us. What a privilege we have. Then the final word in that verse is Selah. Selah. That says, wait, stop. Let's think about this. Let's meditate on this in our hearts, in our heads. Let's think about this. What does this mean to me? It's worthwhile 
to pause and meditate on the prospect of living with God forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and praising Him forever and ever and ever and ever. You know, I don't want to get to heaven and have to learn there the language of praise. I want to practice the language of praise here on this earth, praising God for what he has done to me, for me, praising God for who he is to me, praising God for what he's done for my family, for what he's done for our church, for what he's done for our nation, praising God day in, day out. Well, I've got nothing to praise God for. Yes, we do. We're still breathing. Our minds are still sharp. We can still go in and come out. We can still worship Him. We can still pray to Him. He still listens to us. Today it's sunny. Tomorrow it may be raining. Both of them are God's blessings. Praise God. Today I'm healthy. Praise God. Tomorrow I may not feel quite as good. Praise God because you said you would heal me. I'm trusting you, Lord. Praise you for the confidence to trust you. You see, we need to practice that language here so that when we get to heaven, we won't have to learn a whole new uh, language. All right? Verse number five. Blessed are those whose strength is in you whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Blessed are those whose, whose uh, strength is in you. God gives us strength moment by moment, day by day, year after year, to live for Him and serve Him. He's not given us our strength just so that we can do what we want to do when we want to do it. God has given us our strength. God's giving us our health so that we can continue to serve Him. Well, I can't serve God where I am. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can continue to serve and honor and praise God right where you are until the day He takes you home because that's what He expects from you and from me as long as we have breath in our life. As long as we have breath in our body, God intends for us to serve Him, worship Him, tell others about Him. Because in the day that He is finished with us serving Him, with me serving Him, He will take me home to heaven. Until then, it's my job, it's your job to worship, praise, honor, glorify Jesus and tell other people about Him, regardless who they are, regardless where we are. That's our job. That's our responsibility. He said, uh, Blessed is the one in whose hearts are the highways to Zion. Well, what does that mean? Blessed are the people, the Christians, the believers, the Christ followers, who know the way to heaven because we have the responsibility of sharing that way to heaven with other people. Well, pastor, I'm, I'm not a preacher. I can't do that. You can. You don't have to be a preacher to lead people to Christ. Jesus gave that command to every believer, not just only pastors. You have a privilege. You have a responsibility, and you have the knowledge how to tell someone else how to trust Jesus. Show them, point them to, help them along the highway to Zion, the highway to heaven. Well, you know, the COVID-19 closures have created in our hearts and in the hearts of many people, many people who don't yet know the highway to heaven, but many people who know that they've missed church. There's something missing in their life. And God has placed in the hearts of people 
a hunger, a thirst, a desire to be in his house like we've not seen in a number of years. So COVID-19 and all the closures has not been all bad. Let me challenge you again today. Praise God for what he's doing in your life. Praise God for what he has done in your life, for what he's going to do in your life. Practice the language of praise and then tell somebody else how they can go to heaven and you help them along the way. May I pray for you? Oh, dear God, you've told us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will. So, Lord, today we thank you not for the coronavirus, but we thank you in the coronavirus because you have created a hunger and a thirst for your word, for your worship, for your house. And you've created a hunger for people to return to your house. Thank you that in the midst of all of the suffering and the sickness, we have desperately missed being with your people in your house. And we look forward to the day when all of us will be able to regather, rejoin in your word, in your prayer, in your house. But God, while we're at home, Help us to be faithful, to read our Bibles, to pray, to worship you, to praise you, and to tell other people about your magnificent love. Help us learn to praise you and grow in your grace. Revive us again with your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you. Thanks for joining today. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you for the privilege of being your pastor.